Hi everybody, today I am making a sweet cherry jam without pectin. And um, I picked up uh, cherries when they were on sale, three huge bags of it. Um, the recipe is from this cookbook that I absolutely love. And I've never made the cherry um, jam before, but I've made other recipes in it and they've not failed at all. So. Um, I will bring you with me on this journey. Okay? So, I have just over eight cups of cherries, cut, and I'm going to put that in the blender and chop it up. Or the food processor. I'll probably do the food processor because I'd like to have more um, chunks in it than the blender. And those are all the pits. I'm going to make either cherry vinegar or... Um, cherry juice I think or whatever for the pits I haven't quite figured out but I want to use everything I can and this I picked up at Bed Bath & Beyond I used the 20% off coupon of course um, as it was recommended to do six cherries at once and it was really easy you push it out and then you take the uh, this and you drop off the cherries and all the pits go in the bottom so very easy to use it took me about half an hour, 40 minutes to do all these cherries. Plus, I was pitting them while watching some YouTube videos that I uh, subscribe to. So, I'm drinking my morning coffee. As you can see, it's still very early in the morning. So, I'm going to go and chop this up. And I'm going to put it in the pot. There is the chopped cherries. Now we'll put them in a pot. Some didn't get fully chopped, but that's fine. It's jam. That's the purpose. It's going to be all yummy goodness. And calls for only one cup of sugar and two tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm going to use a Chinese soup spoon because it's pretty big, almost tablespoon size, if not a bit bigger, and a little bit more lemon juice is uh, not going to hurt it. Um, the recipe says that, uh, um, I'm going to put a little squirt more, just, there. The recipe says that cherries have a lot of pectin in it, so this we will cook up on, um, on high. Yeah, bring to a boil until the jam begins to thicken, about 10-15 minutes, so that is what I will do. And then uh, we will start um, putting them into uh, hot half pint jars. This is supposed to make eight half pints. So, and then once it's done, we'll leave half an inch of head space. We'll put the seals on and then process in a hot water bath for five minutes. And then that's it. So that's my plan for today. So here is the cherry jam. Just started boiling. Now I'm just going to set a timer for 10 minutes. Uh, and then this will at least be boiling for 10 minutes. Just gets, keep on stirring. And then once it thickens, you'll see on the spoon, it won't stick to the spoon. Like, it will stick to the spoon. It won't just roll off. Um, at this point, you can um, skim the foam or also been told to put a little bit of butter, which I'm going to do. 
just a teaspoon or so, which will help keep the foam down. Um, if you are um, doing this for presentation, I would skim off the foam and that, but since it's for my family and the foam just tastes like jam, I know from strawberry jam I don't skim off the foam usually unless, you know, it's significant, but I'm just going to turn this down a bit because it's quite rolling boil and I don't want to burn the bottom of my pot, but I'll keep on stirring this. For 10 to 15 minutes and I'll come back. So it's been about um, now about 18 minutes and it looks thicker but I'm unsure if it's going to gel. I'm putting it on a cold plate that I put in the freezer and seeing how that is. quite gelling, but it is definitely reduced, so it might be more of a preserve. I'm not too concerned. I think it would taste great, probably still on toast or in the, on ice cream. So, quite yummy. Not too, too sweet. So, I'm going to get the germs out now. So now, I'm going to spoon this up in jelly jars. So these hold a cup or um, about half a pint for the Americans on the, out there. And you do it to the half, nope that's still not enough, the half inch line yeah, that's a little bit too much now. <laughs> I'll scoop that one up. It's really hard to judge. But you want to have at least enough headspace for expansion. I think that's more of a quarter of an inch. So I'll just take off a little bit. This one. There. That's about a half inch headspace. This recipe says it says it makes six of these jars. And uh, we'll see if it does. Right now I have lids and rings soaking in hot water and I have water set in my canner right I'm going to be using my pressure canner as a hot water bath canner so just because I had it still out from when I was doing pressure canning the other day so why well, go into the garage and get the other one. So it made five and almost a six one. So now I'm just going to wipe the edges, make sure that the lids are clean because a few of them got splashed on. This is just a paper towel with uh, water, hot water. This one, I'm just going to put in the fridge. So, we will see. And I'll just not use a new lid. I'll just reuse a lid, since it's not going to get processed, to be shelf-stable. So. Over the years, you lose 
feeling in your fingertips sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I can't get those ones to use. Something to get out. Can't seem to find my magnet stick um, for canning. Which would make this a little bit easier. You just make sure that they're finger tight, not not too overly tight. Just finger tight. So don't get your really strong husband or son or kid or anybody to, to try and tighten it really tight. I did it once and the the lids buckled. Not for jam, um, I can't remember what it was for, maybe it was pickles or, uh, it needs to have some air to be escaping a bit, there we go, and then this water's already started to be warm. so it could start boiling. And I will need to add some water to this. There's the water over the, uh, you can see, well over the lids. And I'm just going to put on uh, my lock lid because I don't want to put the pressure canner lid on it and let that go for five minutes once it starts to boil. It's almost at boiling point. Here, it's been over five minutes of this. I just turned off the water. Oh, no. Actually, the There's the jams. Now, put them on a towel on my counter. You never, ever want to put hot jars on your counter because the um, temperature of the jars and the counter are different and you get like a temperature shock and the jars will crack and break. Um, this lessens that um, option. It could still happen, but probably not. So, see, it's already sealing. Now we're just going to make sure that the lids are tight. Oh, that's two. Sometimes they loosen the three. That's like the best sound for a canner. Move it so I can get that last jar to tighten with the towel. Yeah, it's tight. So, there you go. That's the cherry jam, no pectin, low sugar. And that's the one that's left. Look how thick it is. I'm going to put this used lid from before. On it, and that's going straight in the fridge. So, I'm going to let that cool anyways. But I'll know, see that one is different. So, there you go. Enjoy. Bye.